Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about Notre Dame and another Stefan Feld uh, strategy board game which is set in Paris where players are taking on the role of French nobles who are trying to spread their influence represented by these little cubes into various um, sections of their borough. This is my borough, you can tell because I've got my little uh, carriage in the middle of it and I've got all these different places that I could put my influence which will give me different um, you know, rewards. Uh, you know, putting influence into my own, uh, into this bank gets me money. Putting influence um, into my own uh, manner gets me victory points. Putting influence um, into the hotel get, lets me choose between more influence or money or reducing the rat population uh, you know, and so on. So I've got, all, I've got this influence I can spread around and um, so does Jen. And what we do every turn is the first thing, we draw three cards. Everybody draws three cards. And these are the three I've come up with. Jen's also going to draw three but we don't know what it is. And now, what I got to do is, I have to choose to keep one of these cards and give the other two to Jen. Because um, basically, this is a card drafting game where Jen, I'm gonna, you know, if I give these two to Jen, she then gets to keep one of them and give the other one back to me, and vice versa. So um, I have to not only choose what's best for me, but I also have to be careful about not giving something to Jen that's really, really good for her. Although, honestly, most everything is really, really good. So it's always a, a tricky decision to make. Now, these are the three cards I drew up front, and um, each one lets me do a specific action. This one, like I said, is the bank. And if I keep this and play it, I will be able to, um, you know, the first time I put, the first time I go to the bank, I would be able to put one cube on the bank, which would get me one dollar. In the future, if I put another cube on the bank, I would get two dollars. And if I put three cubes, I'll get three dollars. All of these burrows, the more influence I put into them, the more I get out. So it's a long game as well. If I start on the bank, do I want to keep focusing on the bank or um, do I want to spread my influence thin or, you know, anyway. So I got to choose. I can make money in the bank and I started with three. Everybody starts with three bucks, by the way and for influence. I instead could put influence into this academy which nets me influence in return. So I could try to earn more influence which is good. Or I could put influence into Notre Dame, the cathedral itself in the center of the city. And what this means is um, it gives me the opportunity to pay money towards the construction of the cathedral. And um, you know, if I, can, if I pay one buck, I'll get one victory point. If I pay three bucks, I'll get three victory points. So which of those three things do I want to do? Well, it's early days, so I think I want more influence. I'm going to hold on to that, which means I give these other two cards to Jen. And now Jen, meanwhile, she's been doing the same thing, deciding what she wants to hold on to, and she has decided to give me um, these two cards. Uh, yeah, no, no, these two cards. Oop. And so I get to see what I got from her. She has given me her park. Where, if I go to the park, if I put influence in the park, the first thing it does is it reduces um, the rat population of my borough. Now, at the beginning of the game, our rat population is at zero. So the park is really not that exciting a first turn move to do because it's kind of limited in its effectiveness. Although also, um, if I have two influence in the park, it's really nice. I should say, for every two influence I have in the park, I get to earn one bonus point every time I earn points. And that can add up to a lot over the course of the game. So it's not bad to get into the park. It's just unfortunate that, you know, early on, it's a little bit less useful because I haven't, um, you know, and that's probably why she gave it to me. And then the other card she gave me is her manor. So she decided not to go for victory points. So now I have to choose one of these two cards to hold on to, and then I give the other one back to Dan. I think I'm going to hold on to this, and I'll give her the park card back. And now meanwhile, she's been looking at the cards I gave her, and she gives me back my bank. And that is my hand. And meanwhile, she now has uh, you know, her own hand, uh, one of my cards and two of her own. So now that we have actually successfully drafted our hand, what we're going to do is, uh, I have the first player marker, so I am actually going to, um, so we are going to start playing these cards. Um, and I'm only going to play two of the three. Let's see. And so, I can get points, I can get money, or I can get influence. Now, one of the cards I'm going to play is definitely my influence. I'm, I want to hold on to that, because um, I held on to it in the first place. So I'm going to, I, you know, declare I'm going to play this influence card, and it comes over here, and that means I put my cube into my, um, oops, sorry, into the wrong one. Where is it? Into the, um, the academy, the borough, or not the borough. What is it called? 
hold on, not that it matters, um, the, the Cloister School. Um, right, so I'm going to put it into the Cloister School uh, and have, as a result, added one more influence. And yeah, basically, obviously, this is break even. Added one more influence to my pool. Now it's Jen's turn. She has got my um, Notre Dame card, um, her, her park, and her uh, cloister. She's going to do the same thing. She's going to um, you know, play her cloister card and put, uh, see, and she's over here on the other side of town. So she puts um, an influence into her cloister, which then gives her one new cloister as well. And now, for my second card, I've got these last two to play. Do I want money or do I want victory points? I think at this point, uh, it's a little bit more important in the early game to get resources because that will help you get more points later. So I'm going to go for the money, which means I'm going to put a resource into the bank, which earned me $1. So now I've got 4 bucks. And now this other card, I'm just not going to use. So it just gets discarded. And Jen, for her last play, she is going to, she could either do the Notre Dame or the park. Now, like I said, the park is a little bit less sexy in the first turn. So I think she is going to go for Notre Dame. So she's discarding this, and this will be the card she actually chooses to play. And what this means is she's going to put an influence in Notre Dame. And she now gets to choose. Is she going to, she has to spend at least one, but she could spend two or three bucks to get one, two, or three victory points right now. Now, she wants to hold on to a little bit of this money for reasons that will become obvious soon. So I think she is going to spend two bucks, um, which will get her three points. And here we come over to the big pile of points. Here's a three. So Jen just scored three points. That was the end of the first round. Now Jen will be first player, and we repeat the exact same thing. I'm going to draw my next three cards. Put this over here in a discard pile. Two three cards. See what I got. Um, let's see. I've got my park. Uh, oh, whoop, I, silly me. I totally jumped the gun. I haven't looked at this yet. Because at the end of every turn, before we draw our next hand, this is kind of important. This is a bit of an oversight. I got a little excited. Um, after we've actually played our cards, we then have the opportunity to pay local townsfolk to do stuff for us. Um, you know, and, and each week to do it. And uh, let's see. Yeah, whichever one of these three folks I take, it will cost me one buck. So I'm going to definitely hire one of these people. I'll spend a buck, and I could hire this jester who lets me move one of my influence cube from one region, this triangle means a region, to another region, and this little action thingy means activate it. So I could um, use the, one of these two cubes I've used and put it someplace else to get even more. I could hire this guy to get two bucks and a victory point, or I could hire this guy, the uh, town guard, who will give me one victory point for every cube I put into my town. Now, early on, I've only put two cubes down, so this one's not that interesting. Two bucks and a victory point, that's not bad, but I'm definitely going to use the jester. So I paid my one buck, and what that means now is I can come over here, and I can um, it, pick up either of these cubes and put them somewhere else. And I'm going to pick up my money cube from the bank and put it over here in um, the cloister, which means I have activated the cloister with two, which means I get two influence. So now I've got five influence. Okay, Jen, she's got the same choice to make, um, and she's only got one buck. Remember, she put two bucks into the cathedral, but she is going to spend her one buck, and is she going to move guys around, or is she going to get some money? So I think she's going to get the money and point because she's pretty much just blown through all her money by going to the cathedral. So she paid this guy, she paid one buck to get two bucks and another victory point. So she's got four points and two bucks. Okay, now at the end of the turn, we have to deal with plague rats. Um, this is all before we move on to the next hand. Um, every, whenever these three cards come out, and there'll be three new people coming out on, on the next turn, you'll notice at the bottom it shows a picture of rats. This uh, Jester had one, nobody on the merchant, and two rats on the town guard. That means there's a total of three rats. Our rat population in our boroughs is going to go up by three, which as you can uh, show, demonstrate, one, two, three, and Jens went up one, two, three. By the way, in a two-player game, you actually set the game up for a four-player match, but there is no player three and four, but this is still actual landscape that you will use for some actions, which will be shown shortly. So anyway, um, the, you know, the plague went up, and um, if it ever goes above nine, it starts causing us real problems. We don't want that to happen, um, but as it is right now, both our plagues come up, and now uh, the turn is over. Um, these three guys go away, 
Um, two guys come from the standard deck and one guy from the special deck come out. These will be the three people we can pay tomorrow next um, on the next turn and now that next turn starts. So again, I draw three cards. One, two, three. And Jen draws three cards. One, oops, two, three. And I once again have to make the same choice. Let's see. Um, and some, okay, the hotel card. Uh, this card, see I forget, did that one actually come? Did I mention it? No, I didn't. This card is kind of a uh, wild card thing. If I um, put an influence in the hotel, I can either choose to earn an influence or get a dollar or reduce my rat count by one. Um, and if I ever have four or more influence in the hotel, I get to do two of these things instead of one. So that's nice, but this is kind of a weaker card. I'm definitely going to give it to Jen. Um, my other cards, I can send my carriage out, and this is a lot of fun. I know Jen loves doing the carriage, and a lot of points can be made. In fact, actually, a lot of points can be made right now, so this is a good one. I might want to do that. But my other one is the park. And remember, I was saying how it's kind of bad to use a park on the first turn, but now that my uh, plague count has gone up, it would be good to go to the park to um, you know, make it reduce a little bit. So, park or carriage? I want to do both of these things, and this is the tricky thing about the game. I know if I give, I, I'm, if, um, let's see. Um, I know um, if I give this to Jen, she's going to give it back because I don't think either is going to want it. So whichever of these I, I keep, the other one I'm giving to her and she will likely use. Um, and I can see that if she uses her carriage, she's just a hop, skip, and jump away from getting four points. And another four points. Wow. she's um, So that's actually quite nice for her. Do I want to give her the carriage or do I want... Well, you know what? I'm going to protect myself from the rats. I think that's more important. So that's why I'm holding on. I will give her the carriage. And, now mean and so this is the hand I've given her. Now, meanwhile, let's see what she has and what she wants to give me. She will definitely hold on to that. Um, she will give me this and yeah, she'll give me that. Okay. And so now what did I get? Um, I got her hotel. So um, funnily enough, we basically swapped hotels and I can tell you right now, I'm just going to give that back to her, which means I ended up with um, the, uh, oh, that's not bad. The hospital and the um, park. I'm not complaining about that. Let's see. And meanwhile, uh, so that means Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so she's got to choose which of these two she's giving back. She'll give me back the hotel. Okay. And now we've uh, selected our hands and we can start playing them again. Although Jen is first player, so now she's going to play her hands. Now, first of all, she's not going to use the hotel, which means she is going to use that carriage I gave her and the card I never saw because she held on to it in the first place. Her trusted friend. This is a very, very powerful action. Let's see, which one is she going to do first? I think she will do the carriage first. So she plays that, which means she puts an influence in the, at the carriage house. What that means is every time you put... Oops, I'm sorry, but that's mine. She puts influence in the carriage house. Every time you put an influence in the carriage house, you can move the carriage. And the more influence you have, the further you can move it. Now, she just put one in so she can move her carriage one space. It can go to here, 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 or here. And ultimately, this carriage is going to drive all over the city um, if Jen gets her way. I think she is go she could come right here and get four points. But I think instead, she's going to choose to come here. Um, and when, wherever she lands, you get to pick up that tile. So she just picked up three points and a reduction of the rat count. So she gets three points. Um, one, two, three... One, two, three. And her rat count goes down by one. All right, and now it's my turn. And um, let's see, I am going to... Um, definitely, you know, I'm not going to use my hotel either. It's kind of a consolation prize. Uh, you know, I mean, it can be useful, but I don't know. Man, I think you have to be a really smart player to know how to use that hotel well. And so far, I have not used it well. So I'm just going to... I'm not going to use that one. Um, let's see. So do I want to go to the park and reduce my rat count and start building up for my park bonus? Or do I want to go to the hotel, which will also... The hospital, which will also reduce my rat count and help me in the future. I'm going to do both of these. So I'll just uh, do the hotel. I'm sorry, not the hotel. The hospital. So he comes over here uh, into this hospital. And what that means is my rat count went down by one. And from now on, um, rats minus cubes. The more cubes I have at the hospital, the fewer my um, rat count will climb in the future, as long as I keep that cube there. Back to Jen. Her turn. Her trusted friend is now going to be played. So she takes her purple cube. Now, this is basically the same as putting an influence cube around, but it's kind of extra because it can be moved around from space to space. So it's a you know, very, very flexible um, character. Now, 
She could put it in, you know, in a completely new area and start, you know, building up on another thing, but that doesn't make much sense. She really wants to kind of leverage um, either this carriage, which she started to build up in, or um, her influence. Um, you know, so she can score two influence cubes as opposed to moving the carriage. So she want to move, does she want to move the carriage again, or does she want to get influence? I think she'll go on ahead and get influence, which means she puts the trusted friend there. And um, because there's two things there now, she gets two influence cubes. So she's setting herself up for the future. And now my last turn, I'm going to go to the park, which means I put an influence cube in my park. Hello. Um, which means my rat count goes down one more. And I start building towards, if I get another cube in here, I can earn bonus points every time I earn points. Okay. And now it's the end of our four cards. So we come over and see who we have to know. Now this was, a, this was available information the whole time. Um, that we knew, and we, and you generally you take into account when you're making choices out on the board, and which cards you want to keep, which of these guys are out too, to you know, have a nice synergy. So the three here out. Here's the barmaid who will either let you have three points and a dollar, three points in a cube, or three points and reduce your rat count. The um, I forget who this is, some um, clergy guy who means um, this turn you don't suffer any rat effects. Um, which can be very, very nice on a turn where you're going to get a lot of rats. But in this turn, there's only three. So I don't think either is going to pay for this. And then the last one, the bishop, he's very, very cool. In fact, I think we're both going to pay for him because he's a very powerful one. You get not only, when you pay for him, not only do you get to um, take a new, another cube of influence from the pool, you get to put it on the board and immediately activate that space. Very powerful. I guarantee you both Jen and I, paying one and one, are going to use the bishop. And I will take my new cube I just got. Um, let's see. Now I could put it here in um, the uh, in the in the cloister, which will give me three cubes, and I'll be sitting pretty with cubes for a while. That'll be quite nice. Um, alternatively, I could put it here and make uh, my hospital um, even more powerful, or I could put it here, and now I could start earning bonus points off the um, what do you call it the the park, and my rat count will go down again. Um, or again, I could you know do something completely uh, new. I could put this anywhere. I could put it in the hotel. I could start earning points. I could send my carriage out like Jen did, or I could earn more bucks. But you know, I really do want to use synergy. I'm going to go to the park so that I have now set myself up so I earn bonus points whenever I earn points. And my rat went down. I have no rat problems. Our burrow is squeaky clean. Jen, meanwhile, she got um, by using the bishop. She could get a bunch more cubes. Um, she could, uh, you know, drive her carriage around, but let's see, does she want to drive her carriage around some more? Let's see. If she puts this down, this means she'd be able to move her carriage either one or two spaces and get another tile. I think she will because knowing Jen, she loves driving that carriage and it usually works out really well for her. I th let's see. So now she could go um, two spaces, but now the one thing she can't do, since she has already picked up an orange tile, she cannot pick up th this, this, or this orange tile again. She cannot pick up any orange tiles until... Um, she has picked up one of the other three colors. So now she's got to go out on a quest to get a blue, a green, and a purple tile. Let's see. And um, Oh, I just noticed I've got this mixed up. Jen's the purple player. These should have been purple tiles, but it doesn't really matter. But that was just kind of a dumb mistake on my part. Anyway, so she can move two spaces, which means she could get all the way down here, but this is just like one point and one dollar. This is uh, two points in a cube. That'd be nice. Um, three points in reducing the rat count, but her rat count's fairly low right now. She's not that worried about it. Um, I think she, oh, she could come right here and grab this four-pointer right from um, the heart of my town. Um, but I think she is going to, uh, yeah, she is going to go one, two over to this space and take my green um, three points and reduce the rack count. So she just gets three more points, one, two, three. And she reduces her rat count one more time. And now, uh, at the end of the turn, um, our rat counts go up. There is a total of one, two, three. So Jen's goes up. One, two, three. Mine would go up three as well. However, I've got some influence at the hospital. So mine only goes up one, two. Okay, and we're both keeping our um, rat population under control, but Jen's getting dangerously close to the nine. Let's move on to the next turn where I will be first player again. And this is going to be the last turn of the first year. So these we'll see the remainder of the nine cards. You always see all nine of these cards come out, but you never know what order. And so now we're seeing the final cards. And let's see, what did Jen get? Do, 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 and do. Okay, now, um, 
I am going to... See, do I want to keep my trusted friend? Do I want to get another guy into the hospital to help keep my plague under control more? Or do I want to start earning some victory points? Do I want to start making my victory point engine? I think it's still a little bit early, yes, so I'm not going to bother with that. And um, which means do I want my trusted friend? I want to get my trusted friend on the board, so I'm definitely holding on to that. And then we'll see which of these two come back to me. Meanwhile, I'm actually going to show you Jen's hand because there's a couple interesting things to bear in mind that she has to think about. Now, she's got, she could send her carriage out yet again and pick up even more tiles. And if she doesn't, if she answers to me, I'll probably send my carriage out. Uh, she can start making some money, which she might want to because she's getting low on cash. She only has one buck, which is enough to hire somebody. Um, or, this is nice, she can go to Notre Dame again. Now, that, this is one thing I wanted to mention. If she hands this to me, I will have the chance to go to Notre Dame. She does not want to do that because at the end of this year, which is happening now because we're at our last three cards, if she is the only person in Notre Dame, as she is right now, she will get six, do six points. And there's nothing I can do about it. But if she hands me this card, I will definitely play it because then I'll get three points and she'll get three points. So... Even though she really wants to drive her carriage around and she could really use some money, she's going to hand both of these over to me so as to deny me my chance of getting into Notre Dame. Right. And so uh, let's see. Now coming back to being me, let's see what I got. She just handed me money or carriage. Now do I want to start driving around in my carriage? Uh, let's see. And I might want to because she's starting to gobble stuff up. Or I might want to start making some money. I've still got a little bit of money. Um, I think... I'll hand the money back to her and I'll hold on to the carriage. Let's see. And now of the two cards I gave her, she is going to, oh, what's she gonna do? She's going to hand me back, yeah, the victory points. Okay, and so now we go again. I play first, my trusted friend, my carriage ride, and my um, money, One or victory points. One of these things will not get done. Uh, let's see. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. I totally forgot, by the way, on this turn. New guys come out. Um, the monk, the troubadour musician guy, and the um, night watchman. So these would be the guys who we can spend money on. Totally forgot. That was very important. Uh, let's see. And now, if, if you want to start thinking about the strategy, I should bear in mind, because I want whatever I do here to be consistent with what I do there. Um, the things I'll be able to spend money on, I can um, pay this guy for a buck, which gives me two more influence, which I'm st I still got three, so I've got enough, but it would be good to get more and a victory point. This guy lets me pick three, pick up one, two, or three cubes from any region and in mass move them to another region. That's very, very nice. Um, and uh, this guy gives me one point for every empty region I've got. So bearing that in mind, let's see, which guy, one of those guys am I going to want to pay? I have one, two, three, four empty regions right now. So that'd be worth four points. Um, I don't think I'm going to want to move en masse three guys. Oh, no, I might. Actually, yes, I might. Because that'd be, um, yeah. Okay, yes, I think so. I think I'm going to want to move um, guys en masse, and that's going to determine what I'm going to do is... Oh, well, actually, I need to double check this. Can, does he let me move my friend as well? I haven't played for a while. Uh, yes, okay, yeah. First off, I'm going to play my trusted friend, who's going to come over here, and go into the cloister, which now that there's three, will give me three influence cubes. And now I am set up for influence cubes for a while. All right, and then for my other thing, I could either go for a ride or I can make some um, 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 points. Uh, I think I will, it'd be kind of nice to go for a ride, but I'm gonna let that sit. I'm not gonna do that. I am going, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, uh, points or, or carriage ride? Points or carriage ride? Oh, that what the heck. I'll, I'll do points. I'm um, starting to set up my points engine. So this means I put one influence in my manor, which means I score one point. This is the first point I've scored this whole game. Okay, which means I did not go for a ride on the carriage. Oh, and I'm sorry. Actually, we're supposed to go back and forth. But uh, Jen, meanwhile, her hand... She had money, hospital, and Notre Dame. She's not going to go to Notre Dame again because she, I mean, all she wanted, she held onto this card so that I wouldn't get it, which means she's going to make, go to her bank and she's going to go to the hospital. So, um, one will go to the hospital. Where is it? Where is it? The hospital, which reduces her rat by one. 
Um, and one will go to the bank, which gives her one dollar. Okay. And she's got all this money from all her carriaging. All right. And so now we're to the point where we, we, we're each going to spend one dollar to hire one of the dudes. And I'm going to hire this um, guy who lets me move a group of guys around. And now, because... Oh! Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot, by the way. I scored one point um, just a second ago by uh, going to my house. Remember, I'm a man of leisure because I've got so much influence in the park. Whenever I score any points, I always get one bonus point. So I forgot. I got a bonus point when I um, hung out at my mansion for a bit. All right. Anyway, so I remember I've just paid this guy. I'm going to move some cubes. I don't want to move my cubes out of the park because you just saw how it's a nice combination with other stuff. I am instead going to pick these two guys up. And I could either, well, I could move them anywhere to any of my regions, but it'd be interesting to either move them to the hospital, which will protect me from the one, two, three, four, five, six rats that are going to come out this turn, um, or I can move it over here um, and set myself up so that every time I put influence here, I can start making a lot of points, you know, four, five, six points. These are both good choices. And quite frankly, if so many rats hadn't come out this turn, I think I would go for the points. But instead, I'm going to protect myself by doubling down on the hospital. Meanwhile, Jen, she spent a buck. What is she going to do? Um, one, two, three. She only has three empty regions. So this is only to score her three points. I don't think she's going to want to pay for that guy. So she wants to influence, or does she also want to move some things around? I think she's actually going to take a page from my book and do the same thing. She's going to move her two carriage guys over here and protect herself. Um, before she wrecks herself. Because quite frankly, if she doesn't, um, she's at three, three plus, oh, actually no, she would be fine. Um, three plus six is nine. She, and you know, it's already minus one. So she could play a bit more recklessly. That is very, very dangerous, letting the rats build up that much. Where does she want to move these guys then? If she were to move them, um, she could move them into her house, which would make her a bunch of money the next time she puts a resource there. And then, you know, later on, she can move them all out and pretty much be done with money. Or, does she just want to get more cubes in a point? Because she's been doing really, really well with that. Yeah, with that, she's just going to play crazy. She's going to say she spent a buck for that guy, which got her yet another point and two more influence. So she's kept up with me in terms of influence. She's made a ton of points, um, whereas I've only made a little bit. Um, and that, oh, yeah, so of course, so these guys are all gone. And now, but remember, there were six. So Jen, because she has one in her hospital, goes up five. One, two, three, four, five. And me, because I've got three in my hospital, I only go up one, two, three. And I'm keeping my rat control um, pretty even. And that was the first of three years. What we do now is we um, basically get all the standard cards out and start playing with them and the B guys, who are even more powerful, and then eventually we'll have the C guys. Um, we also get all our own cards back and we basically just repeat that entire process. We do this two more times and then we win the game. But as you can see, over the course of the game, things get bigger um, and payouts get much, much better because we put more and more resources down. So what started out as kind of a slow trickle by the end of the game is huge points. Oh, by the way, I forgot, at the end of um, um, at the end of a year, because Jen was the only one in Notre Dame, she scored, uh, she, she, she loses this influence, and she scored six more points. She just made a killing in this first year. And um, if you would like to find out how well that's going to work out for her now, you could click on the button that's now appearing on screen to watch um, another year and see if she stays in the lead or if I start catching up. Alternatively, if you'd like, you can push this other button and um, go directly to Final Thoughts. Um, or you can just go about uh, the rest of your day and have a lovely time because hopefully this is giving you an idea of just how fast and smooth and simple um, Notre Dame is to play and yet how much there is to think about. Either way, um, the countdown now begins in 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Bye-bye.